three main ways to sell something is you can reach out, mm -hmm. door knocking, phone calls, emails, DMs. whatever, yeah. And then there's word of mouth, mm -hmm. and then there's advertisement, commercials, posting, whatever. And I was just like, I was experimenting, doing all of them. I was like, why not just do all three, doing all three? Yep. And I just found that word of mouth and advertising is just like, like getting attention. Like once I got Nelk, yep. then it was just like, why would I go buy from shoes from this kid over here? Because they could be fake. You may not be trustworthy, whatever, whatever. I'm going to go buy shoes from this kid. If Nelk trusts him, why don't I trust I'll him trust. kind of thing? So it just associated. So it boosted my sales a lot. What is going on, y'all? We're here with the man. Do people call you a sneaker pimp? Of course. The sneaker pimp himself, <laughs> Ryan. What's going on, bro? It's great to have you here. Um, probably the youngest guest we've had. You're 17? 18. 18. Oh, shit. You're 18, 18 bro. Damn, I didn't know that. <laughs> Killing <laughs> it in like, the sneaker you world. Get, like one of those like release waivers yeah, to like man. make sure we could. Honestly, I was thinking is that. Is your mom the, okay with I was this? thinking on the way here. I'm like, <laughs> they're going to ask to talk to my mom or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't know you were that young until Christian yeah, just man. said it. Damn, oh, that's bro. awesome, dude. Um, I'm a massive sneakerhead. Andre has a history in reselling yeah. shoes, so glad to have you here. And uh, that's awesome. Hey, man, how you feeling? I'm super excited. This is awesome. Man. Nice. This Hell yeah, dude. sick too. First podcast. Yeah. First podcast ever. Yeah, man. This is. It's gonna be dope, though. Huh? Yeah, dude. We'll have fun with it. I'm excited. We'll get broken in. <laughs> yeah, I think I this is like podcast seven thousand for us. So it's like yeah, <sighs> yeah. Geez, that's crazy. It? We've probably done like. That's well, we started back in college. 18, we started our podcast. 2018. Yeah. How old are you guys? 24. 24, yeah. 24, okay. I feel old now. 25. Dude. I'm the oldest of the group. <laughs> the old yeah. old feel, man over here. I remember being 18 like it was yesterday, bro. I know. like <laughs> 24 and washed up. I know. I don't, it goes quick, bro. I don't want to get any older, honestly. I want to like just stay right at 18. Bro, but the, the life experience you've had for an 18-year-old is crazy. And and so Pretty like insane. how how young did you get started like with sneakers and just reselling and, and building a personal brand? I always wanted to do something. I didn't I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I wanted to find something. And uh, yeah, man, I was on TikTok one day. I saw a TikTok and this guy's like, I'll, I'm buying everybody's shoes, like anything, like flip flops, literally like anything. Like, and I'm like, why? Like, what's he doing with it? Yeah. I got into it. I started selling them some of my old like Ultra Boost and random stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and then I mean, I just kept buying and buying and buying and buying. After that, I with the money I got, and yeah, it just Damn. turned into this. And that, really. how long ago was that? Freshman year of high school. Freshman year of high school. So Dude, four years ago now. So we have we started in sneakers as well because our cousin used to collect. He was like a, he's still a huge like LeBron That's fan. He's got a LeBron that. tattoo on his oh, really? on his. Yeah. <laughs> of like his two favorite LeBron sevens. LeBron sneakers started a lot of it too. Bro, LeBron sevens were like yeah, dude, that's that might be my gross. favorite shoe. Yeah, those and Jordan ones are probably my two favorites. Yeah, yeah. So like that started it for us. So we would like back in the day, you had to go to the mall at right. like midnight right. to get the release. The Foot Locker and all this crazy. Dude. So, See, like I came in after, after all that. that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, like I don't even think I've ever had a pair of LeBrons. Oh wow! Truthfully, like no that's one. Sucks. No one hits me up for that stuff anymore. They've now, what's trendy now? Like, <sighs> really? Like Dior's, like, like stuff like this? A little bit. All the designer stuff is like bigger end clients with the big money. Like, yeah. guys who don't want the don't want to look like all the kids with the dunks and the Yeezys and the, the flashy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like the yeah. basketball shoes. Right, right, right. But honestly, like it is the dunks and the Jordans and the Jordan fours and stuff like that. Yep. And then, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's uh. So how do you go from like selling Ultra Boost to having like off whites? Like, are you? I'm just gonna send this pair for thirteen hundred and try to flip it for like fifteen hundred. Like, what's the the logic? I honestly, I watched a video. I think it was Grant Cardone. He said, <laughs> "If you have under, I think it was like fifty thousand dollars, you're broke. Yeah. Spend all your money. Like, just keep investing and stuff. Like, you're broke. Like, I'm like, all right, I don't have anything close to that. <laughs> so I literally just kept spending all my money on shoes and just. Like I still do too. Yeah. Maybe not all of it now, but like I'm spending like everything I make off shoes goes right back into shoes. Reinvesting. Like immediately. 
But and what's yeah. the strategy? Are you waiting to get it on release day, or are you buying resale? No. So in the beginning, it's hard to explain. In the beginning, I was doing like the whole resign thing. I was buying bulk pairs. I was moving them, this, yep. that, whatever. Now I don't. I want to be at the point where I'm not holding an inventory, and I'm I'm pretty much there. I, yeah. I mean, I don't hold a crazy inventory now. I I just buy stuff when it's a good deal because I know yeah. it's quick little cash. But like, yeah, I want to get to the point where I have so many different connections in the area. That's like, he hits me up. He's like, I need those Jordans today for a podcast because this guy likes this shoe I want to wear on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And he hits me up and I have them for him yep. that day kind of thing. I held out on the fours because I got them retail, but. It's a good shoe to get retail. I had to get them That's retail. Shoe to get How retail. do you get them retail? The blue Jordan fours. Oh, I thought you were talking about no, no, those no. ones. No, I paid like 500 for these. Yeah. Oh, that, really? That's a money shoot right there. That's a money shoot? A money but shoot. they're going to go up more over time. They'll be like yeah, they a are. thousand one day, Yeah, they think? Are. I mean, It's the only SB Jordan collab ever. That is a pimping shoe right there. Yeah. High praise from you, bro. <laughs> but, so, um, so, bro, how do you col- how, how do you connect with like all these high-level guys? Because just like scrolling through your Instagram, because I'm not too familiar with your brand until recently, just scrolling through your Instagram, like seeing you with the Nelk Boys or with Tucker Carlson or with Steve <laughs> Will Do It or Slam the Dream. Like all these guys that like people know. It's pretty crazy. Like yeah. it's got to be really cool being that young. But like, what's this? Like, what's happening behind the scenes? How are you making that happen? I was told another thing. There's three. My Grant Cardone as well. No, no. <laughs> Someone else. I learned a lot from him. I like yeah. that guy. Yeah, I he's, like that he's guy. Uncle G. <laughs> yeah, he's dope. But, his brother um, sat in your seat, bro. Really? His twin brother. Yeah, we had his twin on the podcast a couple months back. I didn't see that. Really? I'll send you the link. He's actually a fucking legend too. Actually? Oh yeah, because he's super successful and it has nothing to do with My mom saw him at the mall actually last week. Yeah. He's probably yeah, around here? He, yeah, yeah, international right here. Because yeah, he lives in Clearwater, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. He put his house up for sale, but like really? only accepting Bitcoin as payment. So I'm not sure if he got that sold very quickly. He's a well, big crypto guy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He wore a Bitcoin like t-shirt or something to the podcast. Yeah, I don't stay linked in with that <laughs> him as much anymore. <laughs> yeah. There's just too many people now. So what was the other thing? So going back to that, yeah, the three things, I don't know who told me, but yeah, the, I was told the three main ways to sell something is you can reach out, mm-hmm. door knocking, phone calls, emails, DMs. whatever, yeah. And then there's word of mouth, mm-hmm. and then there's advertisement, commercials, posting, whatever. And I was just like, I was experimenting, doing all of them. Like I was like, why not just do all three, doing all three? Yep. And I just found that word of mouth and advertising is just like, like getting attention. Like once I get, once I got Nelk, yep. then it was just like, why would I go buy from shoes from this kid over here? Because they could be fake. You may not be trustworthy, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. I'm going to go buy shoes from this kid. If Nelk trusts him, why don't I trust I'll him? Trust kind of thing. So just an association. So it boosted my sales a lot. So now I'm at the point where I'm just I'm reaching out now and I'm like I'll hook you up with this pair of shoes I'll hook you up with this pair of shoes because now I mean if I get Sean O'Malley like you go on my Instagram now yeah and the first thing you see is rainbow hair Sean O'Malley <laughs> and with a pair of shoes with me and it's like you just that's it's so the attention right there and it's like well if this guy's shopping with him what's that guy like in person I met him for about thirty seconds okay thirty seconds it was his <laughs> fight day in Miami his last yeah. fight oh no shit yeah and what a fight that was. Yeah, that was awesome. He was locked in. He was locked. He's he like, thanks, bud. See it. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. His coach came down and got me, took me up to his hotel room. He's like, man, I feel really bad, but we're not going to have long. He's got makeup. He's got his hair getting braided. He's meditating at the same time. His makeup's getting done. And dude, all makeup for UFC? Yeah, dude. What? And, um, Probably just gets punched off. He's like, yeah, unfortunately, you're only going to have like a minute. But honestly, I want you to know you should be happy because you have some balls to – Try to meet with Sugar Sean on his fight day. And I was like, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. But yeah, no, he's super cool, man. I talked to Tim Welch, his coach, sometimes still. So did you get the yeah. in through Sean with the Nelk boys? No, actually. Everyone thinks that. And no, I worked on getting Sean a pair of shoes for over a year and a half now. Over yeah. a year and a half trying yeah. to get him a pair of I shoes? Nat, I literally texted. I DM'd his coach, his other coaches, his assistants, his manager, his everything i wow. was like was nagging him nagging him nagging him like trust me trust me yeah let's do this let's do this let's do this i'll get all you guys shoes whatever then finally and tim welch i got him i hooked him through the podcast um yeah instagram actually yeah okay and tim welch hit me back up and he was like yo it's tim whatever i'm down how does it work though 
And I was like, I don't know. I'm only, I was 17 at the time. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Let me I, ask my mom. Yeah, I, can't, like, I can't really just fly out there. Mom, can I get right a ride? <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. And then I just kept hitting him up every now and then. He's like, I'll ship you a free pair of shoes. Make a video for me. He's like, Sean charges $10,000 to make a video for someone. And I'm like, yeah, I can't afford that. And then so when he was in Miami, and I was like, dude, trust me. Let me just bring, I'm going to the, I told him, I said, I'm going to the fight. I've got front row seats at the fight. Let me bring Sean a pair of shoes and I'll get you something too. They picked out a pair of shoes and was like, yeah, let's do it. And then it was very weird. Like they weren't answering. They yeah. were busy all of a sudden, whatever. Then I got on the plane and I'm sending a picture of the shoes. I'm like, are we doing it? Are we doing it? When are we doing it? <laughs> we're supposed to do it. He fought Saturday night. We we're supposed to do it Friday night. And I'm like freaking out. They're not texting. Me yeah. Back. Saturday morning, he hits me up and he goes, it's go time. Come right now. And I'm like, Whoa. okay. <laughs> I jump in the car. I drive to his hotel. And yeah. But yeah. I mean, you just was, gave him a pair of shoes. Yeah. What'd you give him? Gave him a pair of Jordan 1s, bleached coral, and then Tim, I gave another pair of Jordan 1s. I forget the name. So you just gave him for free just yeah. in exchange for yeah. that association, for the picture, right? For the picture. Which is worth a lot more. I'm surprised than they agreed to that, bro. I feel like Sean would be like, I'm not seeing nobody on fight day. Now, right. now you got to hit right. him up again. You're like, it's good luck. You beat the shit out of right. Cheeto Vera. Like, no, dude, the first thing I texted him, well, what, what Tim told me, he goes, you realize if he loses tonight, he's, you're never going to see this guy <laughs> yeah. again. He goes, he's super superstitious and all like, that. Yeah, superstitious. Yeah. 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 yeah, dude. yeah so. but now, now you got an end for the next fight. You're like, dude, that because that, that was a, like an unbelievable performance right. by him. You were in front yeah. row for that? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. What was that like at, at UFC in Miami? Have you guys done UFC? Not no, yet. No. Dude, definitely something I want to do soon. UFC no. events is the greatest entertainment event ever. Wow. Like, it's crazy, dude. It's yeah, funny. that's like bucket list sporting event for me. And we're from the same city that John Jones is from. So I want to do his next fight because, like, who knows how many he has. A John left. Jones fight would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. John yeah. Jones fight would be awesome. I'm down. But yeah, I mean, the whole time you're in there, everybody's got their own walkout song. And I mean, Dana White especially has just done such a great. I mean, they're building it up the whole time. Yep. And like boxing, I feel like so I've done boxing too. It's just like you're sitting there for three hours, going through all the crappy fights, and you just wait finally for the get there and you're tired. That's yeah, the thing you don't care about anybody else who's right. on the card with right. boxing, right? But they're stacking these UFC fights, yeah. mm -hmm. and you're with every other celebrity. All your dream celebrities that you want to meet. They're all walking around. Donald Trump's walking around. Yeah, how crazy was music. it to see Trump there? It's awesome. I mean, they just do such an amazing job. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Dude, yeah, I saw it. The, at that one in Miami, Trump yeah. walks in, everyone's yeah. going nuts. He's been going to all of them now. <laughs> it's, it's so smart yeah. for him to do that, like yeah. associate oh, with UFC. 100%, dude. 100%. Like yeah. a growing brand like that. Oh, yeah. Because last election, I mean, he, him and Dana were obviously close, right. but like he never showed right. up to events right. and linked up with all the other celebrities because right. now you see him diving up like logan paul and yeah, some of these guys that don't really like now. him yeah he's everywhere it's, it's yeah. cool so how'd you meet the nope boys i don't think we dove into that that was another one that was just, just dms i dm'd literally every single person ever been associated with no <laughs> how do you how do you find those people like what's the research process no nope. who they follow or no nope. i've like watched my whole life like mm -hmm. that's always been a big like, they've all been, been like just their business part has been a big role model to me and mentor and everything mm -hmm. and um yeah like that's like i've got a list top 10 people who i want to meet and so this guy does his dream 100 bro it's yeah so it's, it's, and, it's uh, all it is yeah so i'm texting no one's responding like nobody then all of a sudden cousin jay texts me back <laughs> and he goes dude i'm in miami i leave for the bahamas tomorrow i wish you would have texted me sooner i'm wearing crocs i need something <laughs> better than that and i'm like Crap, I don't know how I could help you with that one. You're leaving tomorrow. I can't get to Miami today. And um, yeah, I kind of fell off for a few months, whatever. I saw he was in Orlando. And I'm like, dude, I can be there right now. Just let me know. <laughs> I will bring all of you guys shoes. This is That was the second meetup I ever did with a bigger name. I was like, I'll bring all you guys shoes. Spent like $1,100. And I was like, God, this is, I don't know if I should big be doing risk. this. Yeah, it's like, this is a big risk. Yeah, so I drove to orlando and i wanted to, this is crazy i wanted to bring a filmer to like grab the content like yeah. really get my eleven hundred dollars worth <laughs> yeah yeah. my filmers up in tally at a school and i call him it was that was probably a saturday again and i call him friday night and i'm like dude 7 a.m tomorrow we're going to orlando can you meet me there and he's like dude my car's broke down i have no. no way to get there and i'm like dude you're kidding me so we're up all night long on you know what that app is it's like uber but you can actually rent the car 
Tur Turo? Turo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. But, bro, you're not old enough for that, are you? Well, no. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but my filmer is. So, okay, we're okay. all night, like, till 4 a.m. I'm trying to find this guy a car. I finally <laughs> rent him a car. He goes to the airport, get picks up the car. And then, yeah, we met up there. And, um, yeah, it went great. I mean. Who was there? It, just Cousin Jay or all the, all the guys? Cousin Jay, Salim, Chaffee from that one video. Yep. He was there. And then just Salim and Cousin Jay's editors and. Guys like that. But, yeah, no, no one else besides that. They were just filming their own content for their yeah. own channels. And, yeah, that went great. And then, yeah, that, that led that to opened a lot the door. of other stuff with those guys. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. super cool. Like, yeah, how would you build on that next? It's so – dude, it's just so crazy. Like, <laughs> then, like, four months go by and – I've got a buddy who's in the jet business and he's a big jet broker and he just like he did. Steve Is that, that uh, um, what's that company called? ETA Jets. ETA Jets? Yeah. Okay. You've probably seen him on my Instagram. He sold Steve a jet? No way. Don't see, he brokers them. Like, so if you want to, uh, you need a jet to my, like, so you, have you guys ever watched Nelk's videos? Yeah. Where they're like, guys, are we missed our flight? I need a jet to get yeah. here. So they call this guy. And I'm yeah. very close with him. He actually bucked Steve over a hundred jets his first year of business. Jesus. That's who like really, what a customer. Yeah. So um, high LTV customer. Yeah. yeah. So he's very with Nelk. Like he flew him two days ago to do the Dallas thing with Dana White for Hallerhead and all that. But so anyway, so he's very in touch with Nelk and um. Dude, that's a good yeah. guy for yeah, why you to go to him, touch with, bro? Because he's got all the <laughs> right high level clients. Right. Best sure. I took him fishing this last <laughs> weekend. That you just talked about that fishing trip. Yeah, I took him down there last weekend. We did a fishing trip. That's cool, bro. And um, but yeah, so he calls me one day and he's like. Dude, so my little bit, I got to give you a little more context. My dad's dad, my grandfather, has a, a ranch, like 200 acres, 45 minutes from Sarasota. It's in the okay. middle of nowhere. And he, he knew that. And he calls me. He's like, hey, man, where's that piece of property? And I was like, here. He goes, how close is it to Sarasota? I'm like, 30, 40 minutes. I'm like, why? He goes, can't tell anyone this, <laughs> but Nelk wants to fly a that helicopter. Was your, damn. And, with Tucker Carlson hanging the world records in. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, shit, dude, I remember that. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he's like, here, let me show you the, the picture they sent me of the blueprint. And it's a napkin that Kyle drew. And it's a helicopter <laughs> with a string hanging down in a circle that says Zen on it. And I'm like, dude, Shout how out is Zen. this going to happen? Yeah, <laughs> Quick exactly. plug. Literally, cigars this podcast. Dude, literally just a, yeah, on a fun. nap. I forgot the cigars. It's, it's and, probably uh, going to be illegal to get them. It was on. a lot bigger than That's going to be a hard brand deal. Have you heard about that? No. We did, we did that whole Zen thing and they hit up Zen for um to like do some work or yeah, something. something. Yeah. Because I mean that was on New York Times, Elon Musk yeah. posted it. Like that was big, big viral. And Zen was like, Yeah, we want nothing to do with you. What? Yeah. Because they got so much backlash because New York Times, like all of the left or leaning right. publications don't like Nelk. So like the moment they did that, coincidentally at the same time, New York Times came out with all these things about like how bad Zen is for you. Right. And then it even went to like, I don't know, I'm going to mess it up, but a high ranking government official, let's say it's like Nancy right. Pelosi was speaking at like oh, saying no, it should get Schumer, banned. Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer was saying like it should be banned and that all like happened right after that. Yeah. Because Tucker and, did it. And then Tucker Carlson being a controversial person, I mean, that did not the, help. The association, they right. didn't want anything right. to do so with it. So if we look at the dominoes that <laughs> fell. Exactly. You almost led to Zen getting banned worldwide, <laughs> countrywide. <laughs> this is the man. <laughs> I, I don't want to be known for that. Right? We're going to have pitch for That's it. crazy, though, because I saw that clip and I didn't even know who you were. And that was just on yeah. your grandpa's. Yeah, because I saw that you, your whole family was there with Tucker. Yeah. Like after. Dude. I was going to ask about that. Was your was your grandpa like, what is going on? Yeah, my grand Dude, it, I don't even know how to explain <laughs> You're like, it, Mom, I need to have a helicopter land on grandpa's property. <laughs> dude, my grandpa, the week before, I'm down there, whatever, we're hanging out. He's telling me I just signed up for Tucker Carlson's new network and his program. And I'll say, dude, three days later, I get to give him a phone call saying, Yo. can I bring Tucker Carlson in a helicopter to your house? <laughs> to your house. And he's like. He had no idea when he was telling you that he signed up for Tucker's yeah, thing? I, I had no idea. Oh, None you had no idea. idea. Yeah. That, that quick of a turnaround. Then, yeah, then three days later, I get hit up to bring him out to my property. And I'm like, dude, no way. What was his reaction when you told him? You ever seen Charlie in the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. yeah. You know when he. When the kid tells his grandpa he got the golden ticket and he's jumping up and down. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah, that was his reaction. Was <laughs> I was going to say, it, it depends on what your grandpa's like. Like with our grandpa, you would have the same exact reaction. Oh, dude, yeah, like, he was, yeah, he's been and watching and Every Nelk video and everything on Tucker Carlson's Instagram, 
all you see in the background is my grandpa with his phone holding it up like this video. <laughs> that's every hilarious. Single video. He's in the video more than I am or anybody. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, that's cool. It's cool that it was like literally like a napkin. Let me show you the the dimensions or whatever. The schematics and it's literally a napkin. Literally. That so the jet broker hit you up knowing that you had that big property. Property. That's right. crazy. Why they want to do it in Florida? That's where Tucker is. Or Tucker lives in like Sarasota area. Oh, does he really? And well, so they wanted to do it at the Sarasota airport, and the airport's like, no way, we're not doing that. That's you guys. Someone's gonna fall out of the helicopter. I think gonna land on someone's head. Like, what are you guys talking? About? Yeah, the the schematics on the napkin didn't look yeah. well thought so out. What was it like? Exactly. like? What was it like? You just show up, and all these guys come in, and yeah. yeah what was so, that day like, like? It was, dude. I get to my grandparents. I get there like 5 a.m. I was like, I need to be prepared. Let me get there early just in case, whatever. I start getting phone calls from random people. And I'm like, hello. And they're like, hey, I'm the guy bringing in the Zen. Hey, I'm the guy bringing in the helicopter. I'm like, how did you get my number? They started giving them my number and wanted me to organize the whole thing. And I'm yeah. like, I've never – like I've never met Kyle or Gabe or any of the those guys. And um, yeah, so I'm just like, all right. Yeah, I'm giving them the addresses and stuff. All of a sudden, this trailer pulls in the front gate with this huge freaking Zin covered in, <laughs> and they had it like covered in bubble wrap and stuff. And um, was there actually Zin in there? No, there wasn't. <laughs> no. They should have. I told them to put like pillows or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that would have been hilarious. Been yeah. yeah, they pulled in. They had to do a bunch of stuff with the Zin. They had to weight it down so it didn't go spinning on the helicopter or just whatever. They had a bunch of stuff. All the engineers showed up. <laughs> And yeah, it was a big process. And then my buddy, actually, the jet broker, flew in on the helicopter with one of his buddies, and they flew and they landed. We did a couple test runs. We flew it around, and like two hours later, um, Nelk showed up in a sprinter and jumped out. And cousin Jay jumps out, and I didn't know he was gonna be there, and he's wearing the shoes I gave. Oh him. no way! And he didn't even see me. I tap on my back. I said, um, "Nice shoes, buddy." And he's like, oh, and then that that was really cool. Yeah, then Tucker Carlson showed up. And <laughs> was he what was all up with like a surprise from Kyle and them? Yeah, I was just, just they basically told him, "Meet me here. We have a surprise." Like <laughs> he has a video on his Instagram, Tucker, where he's like, "I'm in a rural area. I'm in the back of a um, black SUV and all this stuff. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know where <laughs> I'm going and all this stuff." Yeah. So, did was, you get to hang out with them, or did they just did? Nelk was. Pretty quick. I mean, I talked to everybody for these five minutes. Yeah, um, cool. Tucker Carlson stayed longer than Nelk did. Really? Oh, Dude, wow. He was like kicking it with us. I'm like, he probably loved guy's... your family. Yeah, he did. And I was like, and he he said he's been looking for property around us and stuff. So yep. my grandpa was trying to sell him on his property. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> you like, just have mine here. <laughs> and it's like, he's like, buy this piece, buy this piece. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about hunting and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, dude, he literally hung out with us. And, and I told my grandpa, and I was like, listen, no one can come. He goes, this is just us, me, you, and grandma. Like, yep. no one else is coming. Like, don't invite a bunch of people. This yeah. has to be on the down low kind of thing. Dude, I get to his house and there's five people there. And I'm like, dude, I took him into the back room. I'm like, what are we doing here? He goes, oh, I just invited a couple of friends. I was like, what happened? <laughs> You're not supposed to bring anybody. And uh, I'm like, okay, I'm like freaking out. My jet guy is going to be like pissed. He's like, dude, you told you not to bring anybody. And then uh, we get out there and they're doing t like five more of his friends show up. And no. <laughs> So I started pushing them all back. I said, y'all stay over here. And I said, especially when everybody gets here, stay over here. Film the whole thing. Tucker Carlson's like, why are you guys over there? Let, I mean, what are we doing? We're supposed to have a party or something, right? <laughs> he went over there and introduced himself to every single person and talked to all of them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What a legend. I know. And that's like not on camera or anything. Like yeah. he doesn't have right. to do right. that. Right. Yeah. yeah. His whole family. And Seems everything. like a really good dude. Like genuine dude. Yeah. It's pretty cool. How about Smart. freezer tarps? Dude, you guys know him because he's a Tampa kid. Yeah, I seen yeah. him around. I'm, I'm I not like seen him out. Him. Yeah, dude, I love that guy. <laughs> Is that somebody that you fucked up with a couple pairs? Say it again. Have you got him a couple pairs of shoes? No, dude. Yeah, freezer, bro. Come on, like <laughs> that guy. We talk all the time. He was supposed to come fishing with me last weekend. Um, yeah, he's a super dope guy. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't even know he was coming, and I didn't even like. Put it together. He actually wasn't driving in with Nelk. He was driving in his own car. Ah, uh, okay. And I'm um, out sitting by the gate because you had to go through the woods to get back to where the pasture was to fly this helicopter up. And I'm sitting out by the gate, like gonna wave everybody down. And this little freaking red Volkswagen Jetta <laughs> flies past me with a smile on. And this guy with a smile, <laughs> like who is that? We're trying to figure it out because like there's no cars out here. Like yeah. the only cars were gonna be for this. And um, 
<laughs> and I'm like, and then he rolls the window down. He goes, what's up, boys? Are you for this uh, Tucker Carlson thing? And I'm like, who is this guy? And then I'm like thinking, I know him from somewhere. And I'm like, that's the Zinn guy. I knew him as yeah. the Zinn yeah. guy. He jumps out of the car. Yeah, we hung out for a good bit. Yeah, that was, he's a dope guy, yeah. I'm trying to get him on the pod, bro. His roommate's my, uh, I'm not going to say it, but I know his roommate. I'm like, dude, let me get with the Freezer. He's like, oh, he doesn't really do shows. I'm like, all right. I'll put in a good word for you guys. Appreciate, appreciate that. Good word. You understand the outreach grind. You get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah dude. dude. That's it's how we cool. grew our podcast like eight years ago. That's how we grew ago. our podcast. And then we had uh, Andrew Tate's videographer on the podcast right. like a little over a year ago. And same thing. He's like, dude, I hit up Andrew Tate's lawyer's sister, Andrew Tate's right. like bodyguard's right. brother, like the it, most bro. random thing, like the most random people that you never even think to reach it. out to. That's, I think that's the best way. Because yeah, you're never going to get a response right from Andrew yeah. Tate or right yeah. from yeah. Nelk. No, uh, I think he did get a response Nell. from Tate. Huh? Really? He called emailed Tate with the video and he said, G pitch. Well, that was after he had G sent it to pitch. all these people around G him G that G probably pitch. told him, yo, look at this. Yeah, G pitch. That's what a awesome. classic response. <laughs> That's really awesome, honestly. <laughs> and then he, the whole story was he had him fly out to like Columbia or something during COVID to do What's a video for What's the story him. on Ty Lopez? Uh, Ty Lopez, I mean, that one wasn't really us doing outreach, honestly. We just, I, my cousin was like in his NFT group and okay. by being in the NFT group, he got an invite to go to a Miami Heat game with him. Okay. And so we just ended up going and when we were there, Dan built a really good connection with him. And then, I mean, after that, there wasn't anything planned yeah. or scheduled. It was just, we were both in London because we had our uh, client attention event in London okay. and he had some other event. <laughs> And we just started like ramming messages to him and his assistant. We met like two of his assistants at the event. I actually, I got a response straight from him right away. Yeah. Cause we had, we had texted a little bit after the uh -huh. Miami Heat game. Cause when we were there, we started talking and he was talking to everybody because like, these are people who are in his NFT group or whatever. We're, like we're not, people, we're just, yeah, group. we're just, we're just there as guests really. But we started talking about like what I do for a living. And I was talking about managing our sales teams because that's what i do for our companies uh -huh. and he was like oh that's actually interesting because i'm going through this and that and blah 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 and i recommended him to join a coaching program that we're in now okay. and he Isn't actually he in it? yeah he joined <laughs> because i told him to join it but after the heat game like he was like here's my whatsapp like hit me up and like send me the information for the stuff that he uh -huh. talked about so we had like a, a couple messages back and forth and then we realized he was going to be out there at the same time so i just dropped him a voice note and he got right back to me he was like yeah, sure. Text my assistant. And then it was like 50 to 100 <laughs> messages back and forth was his assistant no to actually response. make it happen. Classic. So was it smooth or was it like you were no. getting no, nervous? No, no, no. Like, oh, guys, bro, we were getting nervous in happen. the room after we had set up. Yeah. So yeah. the story is crazy. And we didn't have any equipment. So See, that's the worst. Yeah. When, bro. You're like, when you get that text <laughs> that it's like it's a done deal and then you get there and they're not answering it. Yeah. And I'm like. Like you're freaking. It's the worst bro. feeling, dude. So we we're in London for our event. We've never been to London before. Uh -huh. And our videographer that morning that we were going to do the podcast, like his flight's overnight because he's flying from the U.S. different time zone. I wake up to a text saying my flight got delayed. I can't make it today. And like a podcast with like four mics, cameras, all the equipment. Like now and I got like three hours to find it. And like, that same day, like when Cam let us know that he was canceling, we didn't have anywhere to film the podcast because yeah. we checked into the world's shittiest Airbnb <laughs> ever. Like it was like trick photography. The photos looked pretty decent. Yeah. yeah. We figured we'd just kick it at the Airbnb. Was it and a house? Up. No, it was like supposed to be like a nice it's apartment. A it was it's literally a, like. boss flat, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It that was flat. Fuck it sucks, dude. Yeah. We had like a screaming match with the owner outside. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. Crazy start to the trip. London is pretty crazy. Yeah. But yeah, bro. No equipment. No place to record court and ty's supposed to be here in a couple of hours so like we have a community that i reached out to and, and one of the guys had like a videographer that was an hour out that ended up driving in it was pretty ghetto though like all of us had different types of mics but it, we made it work um but then like ty's not showing up and we're not getting any responses i know that feeling. and we're like sitting in the room with the setup like we, we grinded to get this thing set up with the room and the equipment and we're like all for nothing like he's not he's not gonna show up it was like and we had dinner with like our team that flew into london for this event like pretty soon so like we're, we can't show up late to that so it's like all right if he doesn't show up in the next like 10 minutes we're, we're canceling really? and then he walks in and it was like oh, really bro. he didn't text you him on the way or nothing he, he did like right before because yeah. they weren't too far away but it was funny because i was working because i had calls like up to that, you guys were getting set up. I really wasn't doing anything for the setup. And you guys are like, he's coming, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard from him in like six hours. I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> I just had like 
I was just kind of bullshitting him because I didn't know what else to say. I can see it on your face. I'm like, he's not coming. <laughs> How good is that feeling when he shows up? Bro, oh, it was great. like, oh my God. Especially dang. when you're like on a tight schedule yes. and you're not prepared. You you like have to It was to get relief the and I was nervous. I'm like, fucking Ty Lopez is here, bro. <laughs> yeah. But like, he was cool. like going back to my thing where I had to rent the car and everything, like when that <laughs> all finally like worked out, it's bro, the greatest feeling. Bro. Like you guys saying you had to get the mics and everything in three hours. Dude. That's the greatest feeling. I think. So yeah. Least. Like you actually have to work for it. And I think yeah. I, I was listening exactly. to uh, Nelk talk about how they got Elon. Cause like Elon at first was like, sure, I'll do it. Uh-huh. And then canceled. And right. then they had to like overnight, right. like grind to get him back. And then like, they didn't know if he was going to show up. He showed up super late. Right. Cause if you remember that episode, like they start before the guest gets there uh-huh. right. and then he co- they, right. they walk in and that part of the episode was like an hour. So they were like waiting. And at that point they probably were like, he's not coming. I know I skipped through that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to watch Elon. Yeah. But yeah, dude, those are always the best stories though. Like super rewarding. Right. And then the celebration after is just like because yeah, exactly. we felt like legends, bro. Because we went to like our team dinner in London you after. Just, you feel so motivated. And yeah. It's like I can do anything. Like, <laughs> yeah. You have to, like yeah. But then you immediately crave the next one. Exactly. So yeah, well, that's good though. So who are the ones you're working on next? You got uh, a list or is it top secret? It's not top secret. Um, I'll be in Miami this weekend, working on some stuff with Nelk again. Nice. Um, yeah. But like it's, I don't know yet. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a maybe kind of thing still. Like we're still, still in that phase where it's like. <laughs> like you hit up a lot of athletes in this area because I feel like that's pretty low hanging fruit. I mean, you have a couple dude, major I've sports hit up teams. Every Bucks player, yeah, never got a response Damn. from any of them. Never try the Lightning anything. guys. That's what I need to do. Yeah, because I have a, I've got a one of my dad's clients does cars for like all the Bucks players and Lightning players and stuff in um Tampa. And he's like, yeah, dude, all the Lightning players would be totally down for yeah. it. They're like, that'd be awesome. I feel like, yeah, they're just that. like out and about in the city. Like, I don't see last that many night, Bucks players. They're all, I think they're all like down to earth. Like, we were in a dive bar last night. I'm at the bar getting a drink. I come back because it took a while. They're like, yo, four Lightning guys came and went already. I'm like, what? Yeah, what? so we're watching <laughs> hockey. It's literally like a dive, dive bar, like darts, pool tables. And we're watching a hockey game, me and my buddy Pete. And this guy ranting and just like snipes at top shelf, like beautiful goal. And I'm just like, oh, shit. And the guy next to me is like, God damn. He was like, that was a filthy goal. And I was like, yeah, it was sick. It's fucking cool. And, <laughs> and then, yeah, he, he laughed and I didn't know who it was. And he's like, oh, that was fucking Alex Klorn. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> Swatch out. Alex who? Klorn. What does he look like? He's not on the Lightning anymore. Got a beard. But, but. Not on the Lightning anymore. He played for the when they won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And yeah. They had that picture of him on the front of the boat or something. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, I think so. Dude. Yeah. Uh, this guy. Stammer. Oh no, no. I met a I met a guy Wednesday. Um, he played for the Lightning, and he, I, I'm not gonna lie, I totally forgot his name. I know nothing about hockey, and I, I met him at, out in Tampa, and he, uh, yeah, we were talking just for a second. I was trying to pitch him on the whole thing and everything. Wednesday, but um, yeah, and he, uh, we, I was at the mall actually. Okay, and um, how did you know he was a Lightning guy? Because I was with my buddy who's like a diehard Lightning fan. He's in a Lightning <laughs> hat. He's in Lightning pants and everything. He's like, that's what blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I dude, I have no idea. Is he a current player? No. So oh. he's playing for – he got traded this year. I know nothing about hockey. But, yeah, he got traded this year, I guess. Yeah, he's super tall dude, beard. I know that's all of them. Bogosian? That, the first name you guys just said sounded more familiar. Gorn? Yeah, but that, that wasn't him. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Maybe What's the pitch, Pat, by Patty the way? Maroon? Like when you say you're pitching these well, guys on mid series on the bees, on, yeah. honestly, like different. Should, just you want free shoes or is, is personalized? No, I, I forever? never hit anybody up like that. Okay, I just I I will never on DMs. Sometimes I'll use the free line. Yeah, but usually I don't. I don't like to use it because sometimes it's just like I don't know. I just feel like it makes me look bad. That's or whatever. I like to like go into it and then get to talk to them for a little bit, and then like once they're like kind of interested in the whole shoot thing, I'll be like. Let's let me get a little content out of it. I'll hook you a deal. I'll whatever. Like Sugar Sean, I was like, let me get a picture and your invoice says zero on it. That's what I told nice. him. He's like, I'm down. So yeah, but like an in-person one, I got to get better at him, honestly. Yeah. But uh, it's just off the head, off the top of the head. Yeah. Dude. It's just yeah, I don't even just need the reps. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really go in just saying like, hey, I'll give you this shit for free because it's almost like right. it's like cold calling. Like if you treat yourself as beneath who exactly. you're talking exactly. to, they're gonna exactly. treat you as such. You don't want to seem like a fan who's trying to get in there. Oh yeah, stuff. let me give you get, let me give you these shoes for free. How about um, at UFC? Were you pitching people at all there, or just really just enjoying the the event? Honestly, no. I was so like still caught in that moment that I was 
with the guy who's in the ring that all these people are here for yeah. like five hours ago. Yeah. And I'm like, he's going to walk out. I'm, I'm sitting literally the chair on the fence where all the fighters walk out. I'm oh, like, wow. What'd you pay for that ticket? God damn. Hefty price. Hefty price. I was going to say. <laughs> but um, yeah, all the fighters walking through. I'm like, I'm literally about to shake Sean's hand before he walks out. They're all going to obviously know who I am. I'm going to high five and whatever. All the fighters come through. Cheeto Vera comes through. Sean O'Malley's up. He goes to the other side. I'm no. So I know. Oh, bro. He, because going back to the superstition thing, he wouldn't walk where Cheeto Vera walked into the gauge. Oh, he uh, had to walk a separate path. He had to go a different path. place, yeah. Wow. Makes mm-hmm. sense. What was, the, what was the idea behind going to UFC and buying a first row seat? Was it just because you want, like, just for fun or was I it, mean, like, strategic? I didn't pay for it. My family, we all went, yeah. really. So my dad, he took me for my 6th. 17th birthday. <laughs> 17th, 17th birthday. birthday. Crazy, to, bro. Uh, 17. The Israel Asanya fight in Miami. So it was like oh, almost wow. a year ago that day. So you guys are big UFC. Big UFC. Well, we, we, UFC never oh, was that the one where he knocked out Pereira? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my, oh, oh, my God. God. What a fight. The yes, exactly. Oh, my I was in Costa Rica for that. I, was like, that was... I knew nothing about UFC. My dad never really watched it or anything. He's like, let's do it. My dad's very into social media and all that stuff. Like, yeah. loves that stuff. And he's like, That's dude, cool. let's, let's go. He's like, why not? This is a good opportunity for both of us. Fell in love. He was like, this Was that when, awesome. like, the Sugar Sean idea was planned in your head? Or was it even before, before that? Before that. Before, before that. that. Yeah. Yeah. When Really, when he started, when I, I didn't even know who Sugar Sean was if it wasn't for now. Yeah, and then I saw him partying, and I was I'm like, "That dude, that looks awesome. I gotta get <laughs> this guy." And truthfully, I was like, "Think because all these guys, I think about like strategy. Where do I post them on Instagram? What do I put them in a highlight? Where yeah. do I pin them on my thing? Who do I have to kick off the pin to get another yeah. guy on?" Sean O'Malley is. I was like smack dab right Let's in the see. center of my yeah. Instagram with this rainbow hair, rainbow. It's like a good problem to have, though. Who do I pin up here? If you have that problem. many, yeah, you know, look, options. That's, that's the picture you see right away. Right. But bro, like that's the power of association too. Because think about it, like you wouldn't have known Sugar Sean or had that level of like respect for him if it wasn't for Nell. Right. So like that's kind of the same thing that you're doing by associating with with these right. you know big celebrities. Oh, bro, you got those Air Max ninety off whites. Those are tough, dude. I uh, you show you something real quick. You'll laugh. Let's talk about shoes, guys. We haven't done any shoes. I know. Here, I know. What was that first shoe drop that gave you enough profit to like take these chances and be able to give away thousands of dollars of sneakers for free? The first shoe drop? Honestly, I don't even go for shoes for retail anymore. Okay. Unless it's like something like that where I'm gonna go make five hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, can't find the picture. But um, yeah, like the first pair was the orange human races. Okay. The Pharrell's. Pharrell's, Pharrell, yeah. yeah. So this is actually like because I sold all those shoes to that guy on the TikTok, whatever. But I wasn't really had the. It was a couple months later until I had the idea to reinvest that money and buy a pair of shoes, and I I spent three hundred dollars on a pair of the Orange Human Races. Knew nothing about shoes. Didn't couldn't tell if they were real or whatever. They had no box. They were beat up. They were used. Didn't know if that was a good deal or what. And I was wearing them. Like I was like getting too high on my own supply like yep. i was wearing my shoes and then my mom found out i paid 300 dollars for a pair of shoes my both my parents said and they were like pissed they're like return them return them like you're not <laughs> like save your money like that's stupid and uh so i hit the guy up i'm like dude i i was young dude i was like 14 i'm like dude i gotta give you these shoes back i need my money back he's like yeah no all sales are final <laughs> yeah, and nice I'm try like, wow like you're now fine. what do i do my mom like and they i was like i can't believe they were so mad at me but yeah so I hit that guy up who I sold the shoes to, and I'm like, dude, you want these? And he offers me $480. And After like, already wearing them a couple times, uh-huh. too. And I'm like, dude, deal. I'm not going to tackle with you at all. I'm 14 years old. I'm <laughs> yeah. making whatever. 180 bucks. bucks. Yeah. I go back to my mom. I'm like, I got the money back plus 180. <laughs> and then they started letting me buy shoes after that. Yep. Yeah. Classic, Damn. bro. So, yeah. I, I had similar. I, I used to take my mom to the mall like, Yo, I want those ones, those ones, those ones. Yeah. It's like I could only get like one. Yeah. And then I would resell them and then use my bunny to buy like the next parent. She's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, exactly. Dude, when I was like 12, my mom's like, you're not going to like shoes when you're older. Like, stop buying these. I'm like, here I am. <laughs> you're still young, bro. You're not going to like them the when you're older. The whole clothing thing is just like, that's so like big now. Like, I feel like it's always been big and trendy stuff's always changing, but like, People's outfits now are like, some people are spending $100,000 on an outfit. Like, 
So yeah, that's it's a little bit crazy. Yeah, yeah. just walk around Miami. It's people you don't even know. That's like the gallery department T-shirt, and they've got yeah, you know dude. Dior shoes like that, and they've got a Rolex on. And they're all spending money on it. Yeah, and they got a three hundred dollar hat, and yeah. it's like holy shit, this and person's wearing like money fifty grand worth of shit. Yeah. I gotta charge more for my hats, bro. Yeah, short probably selling. should honestly. But yeah, I mean, exactly. People are spending money on all this stuff now, like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it's good for me at least. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. 100 percent yeah then what's a like resale aside do you have like a favorite pair of shoes that you keep and that you wear no honestly no? i have a favorite pair of shoes i don't have them um it's the wall burger fours <laughs> oh okay burger fours yeah. oh yeah Those are like 20 have pairs. you ever been to wall burgers or I, i've like walked past a couple i've never eaten. yeah there. but yeah i dude you I gotta just, hit up mark Wahlberg now dude his son actually he caught his son selling that pair of shoes on ebay so his son, he, <laughs> he, he, his, his son had the had a pair obviously yeah and he goes one of my assistant or something friend something texted me and was like yo a pair of your shoes is on for sale on ebay and he goes in and it was his son trying to sell no them, way actually, yeah. what did he hustle and he was bro. asking like five thousand dollars and that shoe's worth like twenty to thirty thousand dollars oh they're worth that much yeah why because yeah. it's only so like limited pairs. i, I like, just don't yeah. think they were ever released Remember, like, what were the yeah, M&M's? That, the m M&M 4s. The m M&M 4s. They're oh, all dude. blue. So nice. I want to go buy shoes, guys. Stop. Or, like, uh, you ever you remember the episode of Entourage where he got the, the Fukijamas? Yeah. You know, they remember called? we wanted to buy that pair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At auction? Yeah, they're, they're on auction, and they went for so much Yeah, money. they were they were uh, listed, like, the pair from the episode on, what's the big auction site? Sotheby's? Yeah, yeah. Sotheby's. Yeah. So... <laughs> They were like, oh, oh, we're doing this. And I was like, I saw it. And we all put like we all put each other in a group chat. We're like, dude, let's just pull all of our money together because they're projected to go for like 30 grand. (laughs) Really? So like we'll we'll do it. And like we don't have that much money at this point on it. Well, yeah, with with a couple different friends. Like I was I was actually down to contribute like all I had, which at the time (laughs) was probably like five or six. Yeah. Just to get them, like that'd be so cool, and like they'll go up in value or right. or not. Who right. gives a fuck? <laughs> so they're they're like iconic in our life. Like we would probably watch that show back and forth. Probably like watched that episode eight like a hundred times. Yeah, bro. yeah. And then this is like COVID when everything is just super super inflated. Right. Like before the crash, and like all uh-huh. stocks, everything's right. up. Everybody's getting stimmy checks, and the shoes that were projected to go for like thirty k, they ended up selling for like a hundred eight thousand. Or like ninety thousand, but just way, 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 way. A little out of budget. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was watching it, and it like immediately, like within five minutes, at like fifty k. Do you know who like got him? No, I don't. He didn't go public with it or anything. He might have. I, I just wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't know I'll the just name. Say, if like, I saw do you know it. where they are now or no? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, no. You got your eye on a pair of Wahlbergs. <laughs> I've seen one pair come through. I just I'm yeah. not spending that money. Right yeah, now. not yet. Yeah. Yeah. I want the off white Chicago ones, bro. How much are those right going now. for now? No, you don't. Like six bands. Six. Yeah. The off white Chicago's. Yeah, I've got those actually right now. A personal pair. What? Yeah. You're wearing them? Yeah. I've had them for a couple of years. I paid twenty eight hundred dollars brand new. Twenty eight hundred brand new. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. I could sell it shoe used and sell them like forty five hundred. Yeah, oh, used. Yeah. Yeah. No way, bro. Five grand. Oh my god. Because that shoe's like an iconic shoe. That's, that's probably the goat. It's probably the goat Jordan. I, th- that's I would like say. The like. Well, I mean, what are the original Chicago ones go for? Probably more. Like the nineteen eighty five pairs. Like. Oh, it's really mm. art. I would get these to like have them in my office in a display case. Like, yeah. I don't know if I would wear them. Yeah, dude. But yeah, so the original sick. like Jordan one Chicago's like nineteen eighty fives is like it's hard because like that pair's so old. Like it's yeah, that old. It's like, I mean. It yellows, Wearing, it cracks, yeah, yeah. The midsole like detaches from the actual shoe. So yeah, like if you get a pristine condition, it's like twenty thousand dollars. Crazy dude. But like, but like even a pair where the sole is like not even attached, it's just crumbs in the box. Like where it's just crumb <laughs> is like still five six hundred bucks. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Someone bro. sold a receipt for when they bought them from whatever Foot Locker or whatever for like three hundred bucks too. <laughs> yeah. They came out at Foot Locker. I don't know. I just I feel like they were like uh, received from wherever they bought them. Yeah. I remember when they dropped every one of the off whites. Like, Bro, it's just the nostalgia. It's like people yeah. like buy that stuff. Oh, they received the eighty five. Okay, and especially being Jordan like that. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. And the original Chicago Jordan one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember when the off whites came out. They dropped one a day for ten days, and I missed all of them. And I was like, "Fuck this shit." See, like I was. I mean, I came in way after that. Like, yeah, I didn't even know what off white was, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Did you ever get in the bots and like trying to get a ton at release there? So, uh, the resale thing, 
I always told myself, so like I didn't I didn't know about shoes. I'm like, I gotta educate myself if I wanna do this. I gotta like learn about shoes. Like, I mean, you're not gonna do this without knowing what you're doing, obviously. And so I was watching YouTube videos, more TikToks and stuff. And yeah, so I just, it's just yeah, so I was just getting shoes, getting shoes, getting shoes, and I would move them like very, like very slowly. Like it'd take me six months to move 20 pairs, like very slowly. I was super young, didn't have a car, couldn't get around, had to ship them, selling them on eBay and stuff like that. And I hated that stuff. Um, I wanted to do in person. Like I wanted to be the guy, like, like, like being the next Benjamin like, Kicks. Like, no. <laughs> what happened to Benjamin Kicks? Didn't he get like... Is he still around? Didn't he get like in he's, trouble for something? Let's see. He's still around. Yeah, I mean, he's in Miami. He's still... Why do you say I, no? Like, you just don't like his vibe or... No, I, I want to do something different. Hmm. Like, and what he did is different. Like, he's not a reseller. No. no I'm not a reseller. Didn't he end up opening a storefront? I, I feel like I saw he something about him. He had a Brinks him. truck that he wrapped in Ben Kicks and like sold shoes out of the Brinks <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty, yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty badass. But, Damn, um, bro, this kid's balling. He's got like that shoe room right there that you just passed. Yeah, dude, that's probably got to be a million dollars. He's got Air Mags. Holy, that's shit. probably a million dollars in shoes. My cousin had a pair of Air Mags. He's got really? Air Mags. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah, the lights broke God. out. He oh, has all the he wore them like prom. Does he still have them? No, he ended up selling them for I don't know. He, he ended up selling them too soon though. He but, made this much bread just selling shoes, bro. What the fuck? Yeah, but he got in on it so early. Yeah. Like, he was the first one. He was the plug for Offset. Oh, my God. That's yeah, crazy. like, so he was the first one to be, like, hitting these guys. Oh, I'm, I don't know. If he DJ was. Khaled made him huge. Because that was, like, exactly. at the same time. He was popping when, up on Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. When DJ Khaled was, like, all you saw on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. He just had this little white boy running through it, like, bringing him sneakers. What he did is pretty crazy, though. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. But that kid's done, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, well. So he's living. Chilling huh? with Drake. With yeah, Drake? That just like got pictures dapping up Drake and stuff like that's awesome. That is sick. Yeah. So we kind of we kind of went off the rails there, but you were saying you were moving pairs pretty slowly and you wanted to kind of get away from just buying bulk and selling on eBay or StockX. So what yeah, would you actually like, do next? I didn't want to be like, because I, once I like educated myself and I got into the sneaker world and I was going to the like Tampa sneaker shows and stuff and I was meeting, getting all these sneaker connections, I was like, how like i was like trying to think how can i make this like an actual thing where i can take it beyond a high school side job side hustle and i'm like i don't know if reselling is the way for me like i love like being in front of people selling stuff like getting attention stuff like that and i'm like what can i do to like do that because it's sitting at a booth at a sneaker show selling shoes to all these other kids isn't going to do it so i was like i want to I want to be like convenient for people. Like I want to be the hookup. Like when you truthfully need something like quick, I want to be that guy. Because like if I'm solving somebody's problem, they're going to remember you. They're going to use you again. So like if you need shoes to go to a podcast, like I was saying, if I help you and I solve that problem of you not having the shoes for you, who are you going to use next time? So yeah, I just – and I was like thinking I'm like if I'm going to like get on social media and do all this stuff. I need to start getting some big names on my social media. And yeah, so I just wanted to be that hookup for all these guys and just using it. Cause like, I don't, looks like I'm not really holding an inventory now and I'm not really focused on like the sales of my shoes. I'm so focused on my content, my brand right now. It's like, I'm not even like chasing money right now, like whatsoever. It's like, I'm not, I would like, my plan was to not even like to stop selling shoes and just like invest all my money into my brand and like social media and stuff. And like, just keep giving free shoes away. But once I started like doing the nail, giving them free shoes and like Sean O'Malley and that stuff, everybody wanted to buy shoes off me again. And I had to start like selling shoes again because then it just like skyrocketed because people just wanted to buy from me. It's like, yeah, all the high school kids, like everything, like they wanted to start buying shoes from me. So, yeah, I had to go back into the resale world and start hustling pairs again. But, yeah, it's fun. It's just busy. Yeah. So sick. what do you do to find to find pairs like? At enough of a margin to sell them. Great question. Yeah. So like like I said, like at the shoe shows, I mean, I was going up to everybody. Like, give me your phone number if you're in Tampa, St. Petersburg. Like, dude, I'll like if I need a shoe, I'm gonna drive to your house. I'm gonna hand you cash right then and there. And yeah, I've just I've got so many people now. Like, if you needed a pair, I could probably find it in like 15 minutes in Tampa. Good to know. I just have like so there's so many sneaker kids and like like you guys are saying, you started off with shoes. Like, yeah. There's so many people who are into shoes. And there's, there's so many people who just do the opposite thing of what you do. They're just going for volume. 
Right. So they've just got Paris they're, in there. They're chasing the, the money. Yeah. I'm not – not yet. I'm not chasing the money. I'm chasing the, the exposure. You're building a brand, brand around right, what you're doing, which right. is to, completely different because right. these guys don't have right. a face on the internet mostly. mostly. I, in my opinion, build the brand first and then sell a product. Yeah. Or like, like all these guys do, like Nelk with Happy Dad. They got famous. Then they started Happy Dad with the, the Shahidis and everything. Now look at that. Logan Paul – Got famous, started selling Prime. Danny Duncan got famous, started selling Virginia Rocks t-shirts. Like, yeah, so that's my thing. I think yeah. just grind it out first and then the money will come. Yeah. Smart. Is that what you're trying to do with sneaker pimps or is that just like what's the story behind that? Sneaker pimps came from I, – I, that was back when I was doing reselling. I was like, I need to make an Instagram for this thing and because I, I didn't want to use my Ryan Hughes name. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to have my own shoe thing like disconnected so I could have one thing like my personal brand and then have the shoe thing just as a business to make money. Cause that's when I was trying to just make money. And I was like, I need a name. I need a name. Couldn't find a name. And I text my dad. I was like, give me a name. And he's, we were texting names back each other, back and forth to each other all day. And like, we came up with all kinds of stuff. And then he said, sneaker pimps. And I was like, sold like that. You love that. <laughs> he's like, who's not going to remember that? Yeah. Anymore? Like, yeah, so, and I was like, that is awesome. That's hilarious. And yeah, it's stuck. And um, and now I wish, like, now I'm working on merging the two together. Mm. Your because, name and sneaker pants. Right, because yeah. now that is my personal brand. Like, it's yep. not doing all this other, because like, I wanted to do mother content, going on boats, cars, planes, like doing, but now it's like, now I have to merge them because I'm doing so well with the shoe stuff and the sneaker pimp stuff. Yeah. I need to merge them. And yeah, so that's what I'm in the process of doing now. Yeah. yeah. And then what's your plan with it? Like just to, to build products off of the brand? In the end goal, I want to be, I want to do content. Mm -hmm. I want to film content. I want to have a podcast. I want to film content. I want to have, I want to have someone following me around, maybe not 24 seven, but like on all these crazy things I do and just film it. Cause I think it would do really yeah. well. Yeah. Are you posting anywhere else other than like Instagram right now? I had a TikTok for a while. Um, when COVID hit, I was doing like, like cars and stuff. We got I got a lot of views. I I've got like a million likes on TikTok in total, and then I just slowly got out of it. And I need to get it back on TikTok, Dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. Mainly just Instagram. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna get on YouTube soon, though. Yeah, I feel like That's YouTube's like one. if you want to do like the following you around type content, it's right. YouTube. Right. Or just do a meet up with Nelk, and that'll fucking blow up. Those guys are hard to hard to collab with for something long form with, yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, didn't you take like Salim on a fishing thing? Yeah, but the problem was I could only have six people on the boat and they had five people. And I'm like, hey. I'm like oh, I can't have a filmer. I can't have a filmer. So, yeah, that one hurt. Dude, how about Chaffee? Wasn't he like literally just the person they selected for that one video? Yeah, like the Virgin I mean, I video? Guess, yeah, and I guess people liked him. And I don't know if they signed him through a contract or yeah. something or he's just hanging out. But, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen him in any videos recently. But He's just with Jay and Salim, right? I feel like they're he like was hanging out with Kyle and them. I mean, he was in other videos. He was he he traveled somewhere with them. Where was it? Um, somewhere. I feel like they're their own like season. faction though. Like Jay and Salim kind of do their own thing most of the time. It was it was like that for a while, and then they just did this full send golf thing. Yeah. Although now they're like going hard on it, and Salim's running full send golf. Oh really? Yeah. So he runs that. Salim's actually decent at golf now. He's pretty. He's good, good dude. Yeah, he used to be horrible, but now he's like. Actually, Freezer not bad. got in a video with a video. Uh, them and Caleb Preston. Yeah. That was sick. That's actually Freezer's cool. good. He's good at golf. Have, did you see his new first YouTube video of golfing? Freezer? Yeah. He, he started just, a golf channel? Just, dude, hang on. <laughs> Wait, you're going to laugh. I want to see it. <laughs> look, look at the name. Stick Talk Golf. No way. <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> yeah, dude. I, we have to get him on the show now. First what did he was, call his Stick videos. Talk Golf. <laughs> Why Stick Talk? I don't know. His first video was last Sunday. Oh wow! Got it's like, a golf channel. I guess I thought bro. It was I didn't think it was gonna be golf, and then it was literally just him getting slaughtered. We have to be like golfing, <laughs> jumping in the ponds and stuff. Like, yo, what? Yeah, yeah. See, they're jumping in the pond at the golf course. Yeah, dude, those golf channels rip. Like that content's golf. hard to make. Too. Everyone loves golf golfing. now, dude. I know. I know. Before COVID, nobody gave a it's shit like about golf. But like, like that content's so hard to make. Like good, good golf, like. 
where they track the ball. And yeah, it's just like, dude. yeah, it's so high. Yeah. So highly. So I thought pickleball was going to like keep going and going. Now I feel like golf kind of stole is, the spot. Golf is yeah. the long term for yeah. sure. I think pickleball is a lot. No, I want to. I got to get into it. I'd like to get into it. Yeah, we'll go. We'll take you golf. Playing tomorrow. Do we need a fourth? Oh God. With my top golf experience. I don't know. If you want that. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I'd actually. Yeah, I mean, I really want to start golfing. Yeah, I think we only got three tomorrow. We got to find have a single. Huh? I reserved three. There was only three spots. Oh, so we're paired up with a random. Single. Yeah, probably. Where do you guys go? All over. All over. Fox Hollow. West Chase. West Chase. Is where we're playing tomorrow. Clearwater Country Club. Yeah. Yeah, I know those places. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to. Damn, dude! Yeah. Freezer has the same name. We have to hit him know, up. Isn't that crazy? Hey, man, we run a podcast. Hit him with a lawsuit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, when we first started talking because he's had that account for a while, and I've seen it. and I followed it, and but then I saw your thing, and I'm like, is this whole thing connected? And I was like, literally trying to like figure all this I stuff wish. out because, like, yeah, like I didn't know much about you guys, and I was trying to like really pick apart what's going on and I was just like I see Stick Talk Golf and then I saw Stick Talk Podcast and I'm like watching yeah. your guys' podcast. It's so weird videos. because it's like in the little little tiny Tampa area too. Yeah exactly it's not like he's in another state or <laughs> yeah. he's like three doors down. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him at McDidden's. Have you? I saw him at Jackson's really? when I went with Daniel last week. Yeah. It looked like a bunch of like college kids. I was just like <laughs> it's pretty much what he's just a frat bro. Yeah he went to UT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah, Sam is good friends with him from before he was famous. Oh, really? Yeah, like I have buddies who like I had a guy who was filming for me for a little bit, and he was like, "Yeah, dude, I went to school with him." Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I think, I like, think he's gonna do well. Oh yeah, I Tick, think he was like a TikTok COVID case where he just like posted yeah. a bunch during COVID and got super famous. And he got his TikTok deleted after the Zen video. Did he really? Yeah, he I did. Shit. After the Zen video, his TikTok got deleted. Why? Because the association with like Tucker. I forgot exactly why, but it was something with Zinn, actually. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, like, New York Times made a post about Freezer himself <laughs> and, like, how he's basically, like, educate or, yeah, influencing the kids and stuff. To do nicotine. So, yeah, basically. And um, I mean, they had the whole thing with yeah, Jewel, he, like, not even a couple of years ago. So they're probably cracking down hard on And Zin he was, like, too. going – he was, like, doing good on TikTok. Like, he was yeah. with Nelk. Like, he was posting, like, doing dope stuff with all these guys. And then, yeah, he completely deleted his TikTok. Damn. Jeez. I know. He's he could probably Instagram, get it back. Man. Don't you I have could. a connection that can help him get it back? Really? Interesting. Even if it's fully deleted? Yeah. What's yeah, his yeah, username? Not- well, there's your pitch right there. That's what, That's why I looked at Christian. Um, I'll get his just- TikTok back like, hey, buddy. <clears throat> um, Christian's blown up on TikTok. Really? Yeah. He's I'm not even pitch. on TikTok. Like, I don't, even I don't, watch I don't use it at I don't all. have the app on my phone. I try to like consume the content I want to make. Like that's one of my things. Like, yeah. For I need now, to, just like studying. Yeah, I need to be consuming your style. I'm, if I'm going to be doing what was his name on there? Watching. Freezer tarps. Freezer tarps is what I think it was. Yeah. This might be a good little intro. Oops. I know, right? What the? F- I didn't mean to follow you. Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. Freezer. I hope he's banned still, so I can get him back. <laughs> he is. I mean, I know he is. That's is the new one he made. Oh. He made a new one. It's already at 200K. I don't know. It's old. This guy's like popping, dude. <laughs> dude, the outfit is jokes. It's pretty funny. Yeah. He golfed in like a Scottish yeah. kilt. Oh, so that's funny. Cool. Yeah. That'd be a good intro. Hey, bro, your account's back. Come on our podcast. Yeah, dude. What? I'll do it. That's like the pit. That's like the um, G pitch. <laughs> G, yeah, G pitch. Yeah. Andrew Tate. <laughs> yeah, that, that would actually be funny as so. well. I need like leverage though. I wouldn't just like get it back because then he'd be like, "Oh, it's back." I'd have to be like, "Hey, do it again." Get a hold for ransom or something, huh? Get a yeah, no, no. Be like, "Oh, I'm the one that's getting it back. It didn't just appear." You right, know? Right, right, right. Yeah, that'd be good. You have a plug for that, or is there like yeah, an app? Or- the SAS was guy on Twitter. I'm not gonna. Never mind. Actually, yeah, cut that out, Kai. Cut that out because I, I got banned. The hoop leap. Because I got banned for um, I put Lincoln a link in my bio, bio right? that was like. Multi level, it was just like our website to our business. It was like multi level marketing, instant ban. Yeah, like they ban you without any warning. So I was just like, For what? Fuck. I put a link in my bio that was malicious, <laughs> and it was just like instantly, like you're off the platform. So it's I, their AI that just picks yeah. up on stuff. And so I tweeted, like, Can anyone help me get my account back? Like, I was popping off, I was really growing fast, so I was pissed. And yeah. some guys like DM me, got me back on. And then when I got unbanned, all my videos went viral and I went from 10 to 30K in like two weeks. It was crazy. Yeah. But yeah, 
What are you at right now? Like 67. Yeah, I want I want to get back on TikTok. I think that's a I don't know though because I I actually was talking to somebody not too long ago and I was telling them I was like I want to get back on TikTok. I think I think I could really do well on it. And he's like don't do it. TikTok not going to be around much longer. And I'm like what are you talking about? He goes I he say he truthfully thinks someone's going to buy it's going to get banned or something. No, gonna well they passed the bill. <laughs> It's, it's Congress, gonna get so. held up until at least like they said 2027. So like you oh, got like okay. yeah. yeah, like nothing will actually happen for okay. a very long time. And it's okay. they're <laughs> forcing a ban or divestiture. So they're either gonna ban it completely in the US or they're gonna sell it. Which, and then say Trump comes in in a couple months, he can reverse it. Like who knows what's gonna happen? It's gonna be at least a couple of years. Okay, I didn't know that. Well, well until yeah. then, everyone's on there. Let's say I'm definitely getting on it now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about where, like, Logan Paul and all these guys started. It was all Vine. Vine and, right. like, it translated over to whatever the next platform right. was. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, I want, I feel like timing has a lot to do with my stuff. So I feel like if I can, like, if I get all these connections and, like, make all these solid relationships of people who <laughs> want to, like, work with me and film, and then I start a YouTube channel and I come out with that bang where I've got 10 yep. videos lined up that are, like, that took people 20 years of, like, yeah. doing YouTube to get, like, that kind of content yeah. and I just come out with that I feel like I could have an advantage doing that so that's kind of where I'm at just waiting a little bit for the right timing definitely bro well I mean dude you're 17 you said 18 though. 18 yeah it's like you, you got you got time are you going to school like what's <laughs> nah, I, dropped out no I was in I'm like I should have graduated last week from high school okay I graduated a year early because I hated school and my parents wanted to let me drop out so my mom went <laughs> into the thing and she's like to the office and was like, what's the fastest way I can get this kid out of school? He hates it. Like with, by graduating. And they're like, well, he can do this program and he can graduate um, his junior year if he can get all the work done. And I just got yeah, all the work done. Got all the work done. And yeah. I left. Never went back. That's awesome, dude. There Good you for go. you, man. Yeah. Good for you. Solid. And a little lightning. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So lightning round, a few quick questions meant to get you thinking. Let's do it. Um, Damn, I feel like I want to do a shoe related one, but I'll do, do, a shoe do the one. shoe related one. Would be who's three people you'd want to do a shoe collab with? Oh yeah, so right. I usually do three people you could have dinner with, three people you could give a pair of shoes to. All right, number one, who I'm like, I want to do more than anyone is Tifu. Really? Yeah, Tifu? Tampa. Yeah. Is he the uh, streamer? Yeah. Gamer? Yeah. Didn't he quit? Yeah, but now he's back on Kick live streaming and stuff. Why? Why more than anyone? Um. I watched his brother Juke Squad Jack <laughs> growing up because, like, you know, I thought it was so cool that these guys are famous and they're from right here and everything. So I watched him um, growing up, and I just remember like Tifu being like Jack going out in his backyard doing the trampolines in the water, filming all his videos. He's like, Turner, come out here with us, and he's just in his um, bedroom grinding Fortnite, like doing all this stuff. Yep. And all of a sudden, he pops up, and now he just he lives a lifestyle that I think is awesome. Like he's out on his boat fishing. I love fishing. He mm-hmm. lives uh, down here on the water place where i wouldn't want to live yeah i, I really wait tfue is in tampa you said yeah, he's from here yeah, he's, he's from, he's from here area. yeah yeah he's from here yeah so i just think that i want to meet him so bad yeah, yeah. he's number one and his brother buys his shoes off me oh no way yeah, but i've never met him I've never met tfue i'm sure though like, mean, it, has I mean. to, it has to okay <laughs> <laughs> pretty easy no way dude. pretty easy his brother intro. literally bought shoes off me i gave him a shirt with my with my stuff on it he went home. He made it. He started an Instagram live and was wearing the shirt, like talking. Oh, about me cool. and everything. I'm like, dude, how is this guy? Like, come on, get me your brother. Get me your. Have brother. you asked her? You're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says it's gonna happen, but I'll be waiting for that one. Uh, number two, um, be Dana White. That would just be cool that'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. Who up did, so many who doors. did a custom pair for him, or did Nelk he give gave him? No boys gave him a custom pair. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was sick. He gave. No custom. Oh, uh, that, yeah, it was the other way around. Yeah, From I think sh- he gave Kyle something for his birthday. That's maybe. a good friend to have. Yeah, yeah I remember one. Of the, this Steve. was maybe a year or two ago, but he gave Kyle just like it was like a hundred grand, just like two hundred fifty k, two hundred fifty k in just cash like, for in his cash. birthday to play at the casino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like in a sealed bag. Yeah. Like here you go. I'm like, like how cool would it be to like hang out with someone like that for like an hour? Or something? Yeah. yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Number three. I mean, I've got a list on my phone and I'm blanking right now, but uh. Trying to get a good one off there. Conor McGregor, probably. McGregor. Yeah. McGregor. I've got a list of 10. I'm trying to find, I was trying to find three good ones, but yeah. Conor McGregor Those are all good awesome. ones, dude. Start the hour. She's got a fight, finally. I know. June. I'll be there, too. 
You're gonna Where be at that one. Where's that, that one to gonna be? Oh, that's fucking oh, sick. Vegas. Vegas. Just yeah. like think about, like I was thinking, I was like, dude, I need a Conor McGregor Las Vegas UFC fight in yeah. my life. Like that's gonna be. We gotta go, thing. bro. At Honestly, least in dude. Vegas. We have to be in Vegas. It'd be so lit. Yeah, be exactly. That's what I keep telling everybody. I'm like, I'm trying to get all my boys to come and stuff. And I'm like, guys, just buy a hotel and stay in Vegas. Like, yeah. it's going to be crazy. Yeah, you just being at, the, the, at yeah. the sports book at one of the casinos yeah, at the time would be, be yeah, you nuts. Yeah, you have to go to the fight. Dude, UFC is going to draw so much attention yeah. in Vegas. And it always does. Them, but yeah. yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. Especially with McGregor back in town. Dude. Finally, after what, like a year and a half, two years? Talk about a yeah. marketing yeah. and branding genius, dude. Yeah. yeah. He sold his uh, whiskey company for... Oh, really? I didn't know that. I think he sold. I didn't even know he sold it. How much do you remember? I think it was like 300 mil. <laughs> really? <huh? laughs> well, it was like a two or three year turnaround. It wasn't well, like... 12. It was like he dude, barely worked even, on I've it. never even seen a bottle of that. Stuff. I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's uh, like... No, it's, it's everywhere. Is it really? I just, yeah. I just yeah. don't... I've never had it. I was going to say, you also like, ha- probably haven't been in too many bars. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. They point. sold their majority stake up to $600 million. Worth yeah. It, like, yeah. dude, like... I think imagine his cut what was like 300. Imagine sell for one day. Like, those alcohol brands sell for a stupid amount of money. Same with Prime. Happy Dad. It's got a, did, didn't Prime just get an evaluation of a billion dollars? Probably. Dude, that's I think I saw something. Or they sold a billion worth I of, saw of that Prime. Two, but I think they got an evaluation of. I'm sure. Yeah, dollars, if they sold yeah. that much, the evaluation has got to be at least. Yeah, at least similar. That, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. dude, those guys are, are crazy. But yeah. Um, my question is, you you mentioned like your dad, your grandpa, your mom, like all these people in your life who seem like they've been supporting you, obviously, like in this journey that's very untraditional. And so, like, what's the best piece of advice you've gotten from someone close in your life that's helped you get to this point? Honestly, coming from my dad, who he, I'm not I'm sure, got it from Grant Cardone. He loves Grant <laughs> Cardone. No matter what you're going to do, you got to obsess over it. Yep. So, like, if, like, that's why I said I got to educate myself on the shoes. It's because he told me, he said, if you're going to do the shoe thing, you need to obsess over it. You need to know everything there is to know about shoes. You need to know everything there is to know about sales and all that stuff. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah, now that I have the... The knowledge about the shoes now it's time to go all in go all in love it bro that's great advice i'm gonna do a different one focus more so on shoes but let's say you're going out for a day best day ever i don't know you have a meeting with mcgregor and then dana white and then i don't know you get to go fishing if that's something you like but you get three pairs of shoes to wear just morning afternoon night what what shoes are you rocking there any pairs? Any pairs. You don't even have to own them right now. Wahlburgers, Wahlburgers. <laughs> yeah, see, I would never wear that shoe. <laughs> I think they're like kind of ugly. I just think they're more like a trophy. Yeah. 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 But um, man, the Dior Lowe's, Dior Jordan 1 Lowe's. Okay. Those are clean, fire. bro. For midday. For the midday. <laughs> um, you can wear those yeah. on the boat fishing? No, I need a better <laughs> pair to wear on the boat fishing. Um, man, that's hard. What's the early morning fishing sneaker? That's way too nice to I be fishing. I wear these fishing. Well, you guys, you can tell they're filthy. Um, <laughs> gosh, dude. I wear like, that's the thing. I don't wear like nice shoes like I sell. Yeah. Like I wear like, like this is like an, a pair to me. Like I don't wear my stuff. Like I wear flip flops, like <laughs> blue lobster SBs. Okay. Those I love. Actually, I don't know. I should have said that. Um, then for dinner? Those blue off white Jordan ones. Yeah. I like those. And I have the those ones. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I wear those a lot. And they go with a lot of stuff. I like those them. are clean. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Jordan ones. Dude, that, yeah, that Carolina that blue is just best yeah. color, bro. Clean. Those three pairs, the Euros, the all whites, the Chicago's, and the UNC, so iconic. Like, dude. Yeah. Like, that's a pair everybody wants. Like, yeah. No one thinks those are ugly. Nah, bro. Well, dude, thanks for coming on. Last question we have is just where can our audience find you online? Instagram. Instagram at Ryan Hughes TSP. TSP? TSP. The sneaker plug? The sneaker pimp. Pimp. The sneaker pimp. Pimp. Close. That was close, though. I thought Not that was many super people have said that, though. Yeah. That was close, yeah. I got you, bro. Yeah, thank you for coming on, dude. Yeah, appreciate it, brother. That was great.